I'm going to have a look now at creating relationships within Access 2007. Now I've created a small database here which is just about uh, learners and courses that they've enrolled on. So to create a relationship between two tables, first of all I need to go into the Database Tools tab and then click on Relationships. You can see that I've got four tables displayed on this window here and yet I've got five tables in all. If I'd like to display the table that's not dis uh, not on here at the moment, I will click my right mouse button and then go into Show Table. Uh, I can click on Heard From, which is the one that is currently not displayed, and Add and Close. And there it appears. Actually, I don't want to display this one at the moment, just because it's going to confuse matters. I'm not going to do anything with it. So to get rid of it again, I click on it and press Delete on the keyboard and it's gone. I want to start off by creating a relationship between the learners table and the medical information table. Now a learner will always have one record within the learner table here and they will never have more than one table, a one record within the medical information table. So that is going to be a one to one relationship. So to create the relationship I'm going to click and drag You see here it says one-to-one. -one. It's realized that this is a one-to-one -one relationship automatically. So I just click on create. Now it's important when I click and drag that I click and drag that way and not from the minor table to here, else it simply won't work. Right, to create a many-to-many -many relationship, as I've got here between the courses and the learner ID, things are a little bit more complicated. One course will have many learners on it, and one learner could go on to many courses. That's a many-to-many. Many-to-many -many just don't work in, in any database. What you have to do is create two one-to-manys. And to do that, you need to have an interim table, and that for us is going to be enrollments. So one course will have many enrollments and one learner can have many enrollments and that ends up creating the relationship that we need. So here I've got course ID and I've got course ID on the enrollment table and I here I've got learner ID and I've got learner ID on the enrollment table. So if I click and drag that one to here and it's created the relationship of one to many click on create and here I click on learner ID and drag on and again it's created a one-to-many and by doing that now the database will be able to trace all of the information through and see where everyone sits on the enrollments so you can see quite often the enrollment table will have other information in it as well as just uh, creating the interim information you can also have the date that the enrollment occurred, the person who advised them, and any notes about the enrollment, any questions that might have been answered. And quite often you find that the interim table has got additional inf information on it. Um, an invoice would be another example of an interim table. And again, you'd have information like the total amount paid, how the person paid, the date of the invoice, and the invoice number, etc. One other thing that I'd like to go through about him, uh, about uh, relationships, if I double click on one of these, you can see here that we've got some other questions about enforcing referential integrity, cascading update related tables, and cascading delete re related tables. Right, referential integrity, if I tick this, it means that you can't have an enrollment for a course that doesn't exist and you can't have an enrollment for a learner that doesn't exist. It simply won't allow that to happen when you try and enter information into it. So it's quite common to find that referential integrity is ticked when you're creating any relationship. A good database design will make sure that doesn't happen as well. So if you're doing a professional database, uh, that's designed well, you'll, uh, you'll, you might find that you don't need to enforce this, but it doesn't do any harm to enforce it. And if you take that option, you'll also find that you can delete 
and update related records and that would mean that if you had created a whole load of enrollments and then you, find that you found that you wanted to change a course ID uh, when you change the course ID it will go through and change that code number in all of the enrollments as well and vice versa for the learners if you changed a learner ID it will go through all of the enrollments and make sure that the learner ID was updated here as well likewise for deletes if you deleted a learner then all of the um, that learner's information would be deleted from the enrollments table now you might not actually want that to happen you might want it to be that if a learner is removed from the system the enrollments stay intact so that you've got a history there you can prove that the courses weren't run only half full even though the learner is no longer enrolled with us okay and that concludes my talk about relationships